It's a beautiful day. Sorry we are late. Sorry we are late. Technical issues. Oh my, oh my. Gone are the days when everything was without technology. <laughs> welcome to the presence of the Lord. We welcome you. Let's, let's not, you know, technology is one thing, but we have to understand that God is always there. So I know you were waiting and our hearts are with you, our prayers were with you. We, we, we started together at the right time. So let's just carry on and, uh, and know that Jesus is Lord and not technology. We, we can do without technology, but we have to reach you guys. So we had to sort it out. Otherwise, you'll be wondering what's going on. Okay, so I hope you're all doing well. I hope everyone is settled in. You have your Bibles, you have your drinks, you have your, you know, pen and paper to write. You don't, you don't go to the, to the farm without your cutlass. You don't go to work without you know, your computer, those who work in the office. So you have to get ready. You have to know what you're here for. You have to know what you're here for. And you have to to um, get ready for what you are here for. Understand. Understand that Jesus is Lord. Understand that God can do all things. Understand that he is King, he is Lord, he is wonderful, he is mighty, that there's nothing you can do to change his love for you. There's nothing we can do. He loved us so much, he loved us so much, and he made everything perfect. Don't, don't do that. So, he loved us so much, and he made everything Think perfect before we can. We are still having some technical issues. Let's not bother about that. One. Let's let's concentrate and listen to the Lord. God is good at all times. He is mighty in power. 
He can change any situation at any time. Our tomorrow does not depend on our circumstance of today. So let us just surrender to the Lord and understand that he is God. Shall we, um, shall we pray? Shall we pray? Let us pray. Eternal and everlasting Father. Yes, Lord. Father, we come to you this morning, this afternoon for some, this evening for some, night for some. <laughs> you own the whole earth. You own the world, Father. You created time and seasons for us, your children. For you, it is always I am. But for us, it is yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So for all of us, in whatever time zones we are, whenever we are going to watch this, Father, we just commit our lives unto you. We give you the honor, we give you the praise, we give you the adoration, all glory, all honor is due unto you. You are mighty in power. You are generous in love. You are awesome in all your ways. There is no human language that can describe who you are. And that's why we are so privileged to be your children. We are so privileged to have anything to do with you. We thank you, Father, because we are your children and you are our Father. We know you are our God, but what, what a privilege to have you as Father, a loving Father, a caring Father, more than ready to help you you are all over us in love so father here we are completely surrendered to you and we say have your way have your way and show us that way have your way and lead us in that way have your way lord in our lives in this meeting and at the end of the day let all the glory be to you and let us your children receive the benefit in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you jesus shall we go shall we go to the the Shall we go into the reading? Let's see the issues that we are having here. Bear with me. Let's make sure Facebook is showing. Where's Facebook? And we live on Facebook at all. Oh yes, yes, we are live on Facebook. Okay. It says there's no sound. Oh. Can, can, can my Facebook audience give me some? Can somebody tell me whether there's sound or not? Give me a thumbs up or something. Because I don't want to disrupt. If you're hearing me, just give me a thumbs up. On Facebook, please. Okay, I'm hearing. 
bring myself there. Is the is the volume on that one? We are properly set because we have to understand what we are fighting is not flesh and blood. So we've got to be very very careful what we do. Give me some. Yes, thank you, thank you. It's perfectly all right. Bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Good, good, good. Let's carry on. Let me put my phone down. So that we can concentrate. Jesus is Lord. Technology or no technology. We have to, to know that when you are climbing up, yeah, Satan is down trying to pull your leg down. So don't, don't take any, don't, don't even react to the physical. Fight in the spiritual. Don't react. In, see, all these things in the flesh is just, is just distractions. The real battle is in the spirit. So God bless you. Let's carry on. We will not be stopped. The enemy tries to use physical means, you know, what you see in the physical to contact you. Declare to him with me today, I shall not be contacted. You cannot contact me. You have no power. We trample you down. That's the declaration. That's your, 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 your. Your portion right in the beginning of the Bible. Lord, the Lord Jesus crushed your head. So please sense. Go with me. Go with me to, to the book of Daniel. Go with me to the book of Daniel. Let's carry on. Okay. Sorry about all these distractions. I think we are fine. In the name of Jesus, we are fine. Daniel chapter 3, please. Daniel chapter 3. We will only, only read from verse 12 to 18, but you know how it goes. There will be other verses coming up. Daniel 3. Thank you for your patience, though. Thank you, my audience. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate And Jesus appreciates it even more. Double portion. I declare double portion for you today. In Jesus' name. Double portion of blessing. For your patience, for hanging in there. For, for you know, telling the devil where he belongs. And declaring to him, you cannot contact me. You cannot touch me. You cannot reach to me. You can use whatever means, whoever you want, whatever you want. I cannot be contacted. I will not be contacted. I refuse to be contacted by the devil because Jesus is all over me. Amen. 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 Who doesn't love a, 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 a spiritual warfare? Satan is a liar. Daniel chapter 3 from verse 12 to 18. Let us read. I guess he knows what we are about to, to do today. Daniel, Daniel 3 from verse 12. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, 
Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, la, and psaltery, in symphony, with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And if he will deliver Sorry, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. And this is the word of the Lord. May the Lord bless his word. May the Lord send a real fire into our lives today in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we depend on you right now. Take over the airwaves. Take over the atmosphere from the north to the south, east and west of this whole wild world. You created the world for us. You said go and subdue the earth and dominate it. Father, we take dominion over the airwaves right now, over every circumstance in our lives right now. And we say, Satan, bow in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, take control in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, sense of the Most High God. The title of our message of today is Christianity is annoying. Oh, yes, there will be storm. Oh, yes, there will be technical issues. Oh, yes, there will be confusion. But who cares? My God, my King is the Prince of Peace. My King, King Jesus, has it all in control. So, I'm not bothered. As <laughs> long as people are hearing me well, the Holy Spirit will speak to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Christianity is a knowing. You have to know. You have to know. You have to know. You have to know. Know who your God is like Medrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Know your God. Know what he can do. Know him from the core of your being. Don't let issues, you know, blow you right, left, and center. Things will happen. Jesus says, in this world, you will, you will have many tribulations. Then what did he say? Be of good cheer, be happy, my friends. Be happy. I have overcome. Don't look at the physical. Look at the spiritual. The physical has no bearing. The physical is passing. The, the physical has a time limit. The spiritual has no time limit. This is what we've got to know. And live by that. Okay? And talking about knowing, I would like to pray the prayer of Apostle Paul over you because he knew that the believers in Ephesus 
were going through this issue of knowing or not knowing. Yes, they were believers, but of course we are not, you know, it's a journey. We are all on this journey. We are all growing in the journey. Nobody is there yet, as long as you are still in this fallen world. Okay? So, Paul, in Ephesians chapter 1, from verse 15, prayed over the people of Ephesus. And... Um, I'll just continue. So, Ephesians chapter 1, from verse 15. Paul is praying over his, you know, this dynamic, this, um, this group of Christians. Remember, they are Christians. They are, they are believers. Yeah? But we are, we are all walking the walk on a daily basis. He says, Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith, so these are people with faith in God, yeah? After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, this made me so happy. So I do not cease to give thanks for you. Making mention of you in my prayer. So I'm lifting you up in my prayers. And this is the prayer. Verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom, 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 and revelation in the knowledge of him. The Bible tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So that's where it starts. When you believe, he heard of their faith. He heard that they believed in the Lord Jesus and he was very happy. So he's saying, Lord, let them have that wisdom. That's the beginning. And he says, and revelation in the knowledge of him. So you have wisdom as you step in and then the knowledge of God is being revealed to you daily by the Holy Spirit. And Paul continues to pray, Ephesians 1 verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. That's what we are talking about today. Christianity is annoying. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. He didn't call you to shame you. He didn't call you to be like the rest. He called you out. When he called Abraham, he told him, leave your people and your country. God cannot call. Look at what he did for Abraham. Look at who we are today, children of Abraham. So he's still doing one word. Leave your people and your country and follow me. I'm taking you somewhere. This is the knowing. That you may know what is the hope. That means it's not going to happen all in one day. You have this hope that doesn't disappoint. It keeps going. Like we are talking about Abraham now. It's not, it hasn't ended. The hope of your calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense. You cannot come to, to your father without a reward. You, 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 you are a child, so you inherit from your father. This is what we, that's why it doesn't end. Your father owns it all and what you have in his kingdom can never diminish. This is something we must know. No, no, no. Christianity is annoying. You've got to know. It's not here. When you just have it in your brain, your brain can be weak. You can be tired and, and then, you know, 
somebody comes and asks you a question and you are sleeping and you are, uh, no 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 when you know it in your spirit <laughs> and when that fire comes up you tell anybody you know like get out jesus is lord here and paul continues to say and what is the exceeding greatness that means with the greatness is without measure the exceeding greatness of your power my power no 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 his power is endless the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe towards us who believe we've got to believe to receive according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead so all this power that created heaven and earth that power that that kept Jesus going all that beating or that power that that went with him to hell and beat Satan down in his own territory that power that brought Jesus out of the grave after three days, that power that lifted Jesus into heaven, that power is available to you, that power is available to me, because we are kingdom children, we are not of this world. We've just got to know it and live by it. It's not magic. Seek me and you shall find me, says the Lord. So, so, you know, walk in this walk. You hear it, don't just say, oh, that was on Sunday. No, it's every day. We all have to learn to walk this walk. That's why Jesus says, go and make disciples. We are all disciples of this word. We are all disciples. That's why I always say, when you, when you hear this, take it and give it out. When you hear, so it has to spread. It has, it has, the word of God has to have a, a ripple effect in the world. Starting from where you are and it starts to grow. Don't just take it and swallow it and keep it for yourself. Make sure that others, you know, eat from this table. Because the, there's always enough to eat on this table. That power, verse 12, which he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all, all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come. In all eternity, there is nothing that can be compared to this power. You just have to know it. Don't let Satan intimidate you anymore. And verse 22 says, And he put um, 20 things under his... Oh, okay, no. He put 50 things under his feet. No, sir. He put all things. All things, he put all things, all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. So you are cemented, you are one in Christ Jesus. You are the church, Jesus is your head. You are the church, Jesus is your head. So what he does, you do. That's why the, the, the body of Christ has to submit to Christ, the head. He put all things under his feet, under his feet. If you are his body, <laughs> where is your feet? Yeah, right where it is. So all things are under your feet. This is not pride. This is Bible. Christianity. 
He put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Jesus rules in your life and so you cannot allow the, set, the, the devil to come and rule in your life. The church, which is his body, the fullness of him who feels all in all. So he's everywhere. He's everywhere. That's why we take dominion from the north to the south to the east and the west. God said, go, subdue the earth and dominate it. So we have power in Christ Jesus and we have dominion over all things. We've got to get this. I thought I finished this message to last week, but there, there we go again. This is kingdom hour. Take your position in your father's house. You are an heir to this throne. Jesus calls us co-heirs. He's the head, we are his body. We've got to get it. So, you know, we can easily call this message also revelation power. We've, we've got to have that revelation power. The revelation power is the knowing. The power to know. The ability to know. Comes from the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Let us not take our Christian life, you know, or... or you know, in a trivial matter. There is absolutely nothing like having a personal relationship with someone. It's not a, it's not a head knowledge. When we talk about knowing, it's an inner knowing. When you know someone deeply and personally, then, then you can easily imagine what that person can do or would do in certain circumstances. Yeah? You, 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 can, you know, when somebody tells you something about somebody, you say, hmm, that doesn't sound like that person. Yeah, because you know that person. Or they say, what do you think this person would do? Oh, I'm sure he or she would do this and that. Yeah, because you know the person. This relationship is key here. Relationship, personal relationship. We must know someone to a certain degree before we can vouch for that person. Not to mention, you know, going to the extent of saying, I'll die. You know, people say, oh, I, I, I would put my hand on fire for that person. Yeah, I know. We, we, we can say it. Easily, but I'm, I'm talking about when push comes to shove. You cannot just say, I'll die for somebody that you don't know. Or oh, I'll vouch for that person. Really? I'll go to prison. If, okay, if, if, uh, if he runs away, come and, come and arrest me in his place. I'll, I'll go to prison for that person. That means you know the person. That means you love the person. That means, I mean, there's something deep. Relationship is key. For you to, you know, something that will bring you to that extent of you saying, uh, you know, I, I vowed for this person. If he, if he runs away, arrest me in his place. If he, if he gets a, a death sentence, I'll die in his place. Come on, you don't say that easily. There has to be an agreement or relationship on such a deep level before anyone would agree to do such a thing. Jesus did that for us. Jesus did long before you came, long before I came. He trusted us. He never created us to fail. It's the lie of the enemy that is causing trouble in the world. Jesus already vouched for you. <laughs> he took your place on that tree. He became a curse for you. 
We need to get this truth so that we will stop allowing Satan to lie to, to you know he's the father of all lies. He must not keep putting us on a lower level than we belong. This, this is what we are supposed to have in God. That, this kind of relationship. Because he chose to do this for us. Okay. Going back to Abraham that I just mentioned. God called Abraham away, you know, out of his country, away from his people. Yeah, he took his dad and his nephew Lot with him. However, you know, they settled in, in Haran until the father died because God, when God said, I want you, I, I want you. And then, after all the years of not having a child, and then Sarah saying, okay, I'm getting old, get my, my slave girl to, to have a child for you. And he had other children, but God said, that's your business. That's not what I told you to do. You acted in the flesh. So when he was a hundred years old, so this happened since he was 75. So for 25 years, he's walking with the Lord. Yeah, no child that had all the riches in the world. And he said, oh, my servant is going to be, to, to be my heir. God said, no, you will have a child. But he was getting older. And older. So in the physical, everything looked impossible. And God said, your wife, Sarah, will give you a child. You see, that is dependence. That is, that is what we need to have. Yes, you, it will be difficult in the flesh. We know that. But why do we have a God we can depend on? This is where we come in. This is where our faith comes in. This is where we learn to walk with this almighty God. With whom all things are possible. At the age of 100, Sarah was 90. God said, now I will strengthen you. That's the power Paul was talking about. I will strengthen you supernaturally to have a child. Because by now, physically, they are gone. And so, after several years, the boy is old enough. And God said, uh -huh, I believe Abraham, my servant, knows me now. Let me see if he understands. You see? Paul says that you may know and then you may come to an understanding. Knowing is not enough. You must understand. So God says, let me see. My servant Abraham knows me. But let me see whether he truly understands who I am. He said, my friend, <laughs> you know that child? Genesis 22. Go to Genesis 22 for that story. From verse 1 to 18. You know that child that you love? Go and sacrifice him for me if you love me more. All right. God clearly, clearly said to him, verse 2, Take now your son. You are only, you are only son. God didn't count the other ones that he had. Because that wasn't God's plan. That was just a sideshow. It wasn't in God's plan. Take now your son. Your only son Isaac. He mentioned him by name. Your only, only son Isaac. Whom you love. That's the child you got when you were 100 years old. So it has to be something special. Whom you love. And go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. By this time, trust me, Abraham had the knowing 
he knew and he understood. And so he took his son with his servants and went on the journey because God said, I will show you. So he just, you, you, you just have to keep walking with this God. If you know it all, then it's not him. He, he has too much for you. He cannot tell all of it to you at once. Your mind cannot take it. You just have to learn to trust. So, Abraham took Isaac and see, Isaac was old enough to carry the wood up the mountain. So he wasn't a baby. You see? After you waited for this son for all these years, God was only testing him to be able to fulfill his divine plan for him. When you are going through a testing, it's for your promotion. Marco Sarata. That's a word for somebody. Don't, don't despise your tribulation or your problems. Because if you go to the end of that story in verse in verse uh, 15, so Genesis 22, you can read the rest. Uh, we don't have time as usual. Verse 15, then the angel, well, while he was ready to sacrifice Isaac, then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Listen to what God declares about Abraham. Receive it if you are a child of Abraham. Blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemy. You possess the gates of Satan and you are still crying because he's, you know, troubling you. Come on. Tell him who you are. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. It's God's word. It stands. It's look at Israel. That's the result. If it works for them... <laughs> Are you different? No. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Full stop. Because you have obeyed my voice. You dared to do the utmost because you love me, because you know me, because you have a deep understanding of me. I'm taking you guys deep. You must get deep. There's no time to waste and play baby church anymore. Moses, yeah, oh, sorry, Abraham knew God so well that he was ready to offer up Isaac. Nothing should 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 be so precious to you that you say, Oh Lord. You know what? Uh, I don't think I can follow you on this one. Read the Bible. Okay? I just called Moses. So let's, let's touch a little bit on Moses as well. Moses knew God so well that he was ready to forfeit his eternal position for the stubborn people of Israel. Moses told God, Exodus 32, Exodus 32, verse 30, let's go there quickly as well. Exodus 32, from verse 30 to 34, I'll quickly read that one. He says, now it came to pass on the next day that Moses said to the people, 
you have committed a great sin. That's when they built the, the golden calf and worshipped it. Okay? We are still leading up to the story of uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So, just laying the foundation so that you see that it's not, it didn't happen in one place. It happened in other places. So, these people were worshipping a golden calf. And Moses came from the mountain, from the meeting with the Lord, and uh, was very unhappy with them and said, you have committed a great sin. So now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. See, God doesn't forsake you the moment you sin. If not, none of us would be here. Trust me, none of us would be here by now. Because we have all sinned. It's by his grace that we are talking boldly. Then Moses, verse 31, Exodus chapter 32, verse 31. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, these people have committed a great sin and have made for themselves a God of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book, which you have written. And the Lord said to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. Now therefore, go. Lead the people to the place of which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit for punishment, I will visit punishment upon them for their sin. My point is, when you know God like Moses knew God, you can bargain with God. Yes, you can. And Moses understood the, the, the heart of God, the loving kindness, his, his compassion, his mercy. And Moses said, before you destroy these people, yes, they have sinned, but I know you. Before you blot them out, blot me out. Because of Moses, God relented. You, there are other places you can read that too. When you know God, you can bargain. Because he said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. He calls Abraham friend. Before he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, shall I hide this thing from my friend Abraham? God wants to talk to you more than you, you even know it. Let us get going with this God. Let us say every day, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. I don't understand all these things, but I, I want to understand. Please help me. And the, and, and the word of God says, seek my face. When you seek me, you will find me. With all your heart, when you seek me, not just lip service, when you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. So there you go. Moses was ready to give up his life for the stubborn children of Israel because he knew his God. Abraham was ready to give up his son, his only son that he loved, the son of promise, because he knew God. What are you still holding from God that he's asking you of? Your job, your career, your whatever. Think it's personal. It's personal. Now let's go to our story of today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm loving it. I hope you guys are loving it too. The power of knowing God. The, the 
pleasure of his presence. In his presence is fullness of joy at his right hand and pleasure forevermore. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were so sold out to, to the God of his Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or Abraham, Isaac, and Israel that we are talking about, that they saw the fiery furnace as nothing else but an insult against their God. The king said, you bow down and worship my piece of gold. Oh, I throw you in the fire. Oh, go on then. It's an insult to my God. You don't have to go far, people. <laughs> Look around you. Superpowers still think that they can tell you what you should do. Do you have a God or you don't have a God? Babylon was the superpower in in that time the so babylon was the war power the the ruling power in that time and nebuchadnezzar was was ruling over nations and their people and people of different languages nebuchadnezzar in his dream was the head of gold so we are talking about superpower yes so he thought he had it all. Oh, I'll quickly show you that. In uh, you have to flip to the book of Daniel now. Daniel chapter two tells us about that dream. We won't go into that, but just to, to show you that Nebuchadnezzar ruled. He was the king. He was the head of gold. Every other thing was under his feet. He actually, you know lived what God declared over us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Fill the earth, <laughs> subdue it, and have dominion. Nebuchadnezzar did it. So, Daniel 2 verse 31. You, O king, were watching. So this is Daniel interpreting his dream. You, O king, were watching, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. This image, yes, this image's head was of fine gold. So not just any dirty gold, fine gold. Its chest and arms of silver, his belly and thighs of bronze, his legs of iron, his feet partly of iron and partly clay. So, and to jump to verse 36. This is the, this is the dream. Now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. You, O king, are a king of kings. So he ruled over other kings. When we are talking about nations, we are not talking about, you know, two countries. So he, he ruled, he was the superpower. You, O king, verse 37 of Daniel 2. You, O king, are a king of kings. Small king, yeah? Of other small kings. For the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field, and the birds of the heaven, he has given them into your hand, and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. You see, if God gave dominion to a heathen king, how much more you his child? That word in Genesis chapter 1 still stands. It, it, here, it manifested in, in Nebuchadnezzar. You are that head of gold. 
So because he was ruling, but he didn't know which God gave him that power, because you can clearly say, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. Everything you have is from God, whether you know him or not. Stop boasting. You didn't come into this world with anything. You came naked. And he says there, like, just like in Genesis, he gave you authority over the, the beasts of the field and the birds of the heaven. Just what, exactly what is written in Genesis we've been talking about. So Nebuchadnezzar ruled. Yeah? So, now, going to chapter 3. Let's jump to our text of today. So, because he ruled, but did not have the, the knowledge of God, he messed up with the power that he got. Look around you. Still happening. So, it came a time when he created this image of gold. And he told everyone. He says, when you hear. So, verse 7 of chapter 3. You can read the whole story. I have to jump because we, we won't have all the time. So at the time when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and lyre in symphony with all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages. So all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Oh yeah? He was boss. He was the boss. And he commanded when you hear that music. Yeah? When the gong goes with music, the symphony, just know that it is time to bow down and worship my image of gold, which I set up. That's what I want. That Because I'm king. So you do it. And he says, all the people all oh, the nations. So, but it happened in verse 8. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. Uh -huh. So there were people that were not included in all the people. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O oh, king, live forever. Backbiting, envy. You, O oh king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image. And, verse 11, Daniel 3, and whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Okay. Remember here, there's envy and there's conspiracy because you are not politically correct, because you are trying to do what is right. So, they, are, they, they told the king, verse 12, let's read on, verse 12. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Their names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. It's like king. See the people you put in power. Look at the people that you put in power to, to do your kingdom business. They are not obeying you. 
So this is envy. Watch around you. Look around you. The Bible says there in verse 7, all the people, nation, and languages fell down. So, my question is that, are you standing out for righteousness or are you politically correct and blending in because of possible persecution? Look at the world around you. All the people does not always mean every single person. Oh, everyone is doing it. Let's do it. Are you your own person or are you everyone? Everyone is doing it. Does it mean I have to do it too? Or do I have a head to think? Are you you or are you everyone? What's your name? Because the Bible says they're all the people. But was all the people all the people really? Because in verse 12 he says, However, there are certain Jews, certain people that have decided to know their God and not to do rubbish. There are certain Jews whom you have set up or set over the affairs of the province who are not buying down to your image of gold. At this, of course, Nebuchadnezzar, he didn't know this God we are talking about. He was furious. He was furious. He ordered, bring them here. Let's look at let's look at the Bible verse 18. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. And the king, knowing these people's track record, they are good men, they, they run the kingdom well, they do his affairs properly, they take care of business properly. So he's trying to be lenient here. He doesn't just kick them off. So verse 14, Nebuchadnezzar spoke to them saying, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which, which I have set up? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. That was yesterday. That was the past. Now, now, from verse 15. Now, if you are ready from now on, at the two, uh, sorry, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, la, sound tree in symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, then it's good. Then we'll forget this whole story. If you can just bow down to my piece of gold, I will be lenient. I will forget this backbiting and envy and conspiracy. Okay. Verse. Um, yeah, so he says, I'm reading verse 15 still. He says, then it's good. And he goes on. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately. So I've given you one chance. Now I'm not giving you another chance. You shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? You see, he did not know their God. Christianity is a knowing. You've got to know. And my men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in verse 16, answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. It's like, <laughs> we know what we know. We know we, we, we can't even start to discuss this matter because you won't get it. Ha! These are subjects talking to the, the king of kings. 
I'm talking about small k's in both cases. Small king of other small kings. Okay? That is why you have to know the king with the big K. Marco Sarata. Jesus Christ. You've got to know. We, we, we have no need. We have no need to answer you in this matter. I don't care how we explain it. If you are not in spirit, you won't get it. You will just go and cause more trouble for yourself. And they continue, if that is the case, if you think if we must bow down to your thing when we, we know we will not, if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Do you know your God? These were workers in Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. He was so pompous. He said, okay, I'm, I'm generous if you didn't do it before. But from now on, if you don't do, I'm going to throw you in that fire. And who is that God who will deliver you from my hands? They say, well, <laughs> you are the, the small king of other small kings. We worship a big king over all who's, who has everything under his feet. He has you under his feet. You've got to be bold in your Christian walk. Know the truth. And the truth will set you free. It's not mouth. It's written here. Go and read it for yourself. But without the Holy Spirit, trust me, you won't get it. These people are telling Nebuchadnezzar, sorry, we can't even answer you. We can't even answer you. It will be a waste of energy. And they continue in verse 18. But if not, if that this our God thinks it's our day to go, then fine. If he doesn't deliver us from that fire, fine. Let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your God. No matter what happens, I'm not serving your God. Nor will, will we worship that gold image which you have set up. Know what you are doing and do it from A to Z. Don't say, oh, let's see how it goes. The moment you say, let's see how it goes, you failed. Know where you stand. Know where you stand. Of course, the king was furious. <laughs> he was really furious this time. Because first, the people told him, there are these Jewish people who don't, he don't listen to you. Now he heard it. This guy wasn't backbiting. It was to his face. So he was really furious in verse 19. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. And the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You see, he was lenient to them. He was saying, oh, okay, let's forgive them, you know. I know they are intelligent men. I know they are good men. I know I know they have been doing, you know, everything well in my kingdom so far. I mean, this, this shouldn't be a big deal. I'll forgive them if they just do this one. And they say, mm -mm, this is beyond duty. No, sir. This is beyond service to your kingdom. You are, you are, you are, you are crossing the boundary here. You are... A small king over all kings. We serve a big king over all. Come on. So his expression changed towards this man. He spoke and commanded that they should hit the furnace seven times 
more than it was usually heated. It's like they date me. These people date me. Go heat up that furnace more than ever. Let me see where their mouth will be now. Uh huh. And then he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cut them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then, these men were bound in their coats and their trousers. They wear, they wear their turbans and their other garments and they were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, listen to this. When people hate you, feel sorry for them. Just feel sorry for them and pray for them. They don't even know what they are doing. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed the men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You see? He said, strong Mighty men, warriors, tie them up so that they don't escape and throw them in the fire. Then God consumed and the people that they threw in, listen. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, verse 23, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And something strange happened. The king was waiting to rub his finger and say, yeah, they dared to disobey me. Now let me see how they are. The, the, the fire has consumed the men that even threw them in the fire. Let me see what is going to happen to them now. And then, then the king was astonished. Something strange is happening here. And he got off from his throne. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you understand what it takes a king to get off from his throne? Like Jesus stood up for Stephen. Do you have a clue what it takes for a king to get off from his throne? When all his subjects are around him. Not talking about getting of his bed talking about throne in front of everybody it's got to be a big deal the, the king was astonished and he rose in haste and spoke saying to his counselors did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire they answered and said to the king True, true, O oh king. Sounds like the parliament. True, true, O oh king. Look, he said. I see four men loose. Walking in the midst of the fire. And they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. This is very strange. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near. Even he, we, <laughs> you guys must picture this. He didn't just get off of his throne. He did it in a haste, and now he's rushing to the mouth of the, of the, of the fiery pit. And screamed. God, God had to protect him. If not, he would have been consumed by the flame as well. And he spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out! Now my eyes have seen strange things today. You mean? Oh, yes, I, I mean it. And we were not shaken one way or the other. Come out. And come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. Why? 
because by this time the consuming fire has stepped into the fire do you understand do you do you understand this game fire visited fire one is heavenly and one is made with human hands so who bows of course everything is under his feet all consuming fire see when when the consuming fire steps in there's no fire that can stand that's why i said midrach shadrach meshach and abednego you know saw all this as an insult to their god The men knew something that the king did not know. Do you know you are God? Do you know you are God? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Israel. Do you know this God? The possessor of heaven and earth, he owns it all. And has called you to inherit it. To co-reign with him. The one that gave the nations to King Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Apostle Paul said it. He said, the eyes, let the eyes of their hearts. The eyes of their understanding be enlightened. Pray this prayer over yourself. Father, enlighten the eyes of my understanding. That means the eyes of my inner man. My spiritual eye. That I may know the hope of your calling. As well as my in e eternal inheritance. It's not what we see here. This will all pass. They knew, these men knew something Nebuchadnezzar did not know. They knew the exceeding greatness of God's power towards them because they believed. That's all, because they believed. They refused to be like the rest. Oh, everyone is doing it. Um, is my name everyone? They knew the power of resurrection. That we are talking about in Ephesians 1. These three men knew. And because they knew the power of this resurrection, they knew that they would not die one way or the other. If this God decides to save us physically from this fire, fine. But one way or the other, I cannot die. They knew the power of the resurrection that we read in Ephesians 1. Whether they step into the fire or not, they knew they were alive. Their eyes were enlightened. They knew the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. They knew their God and they demonstrated that knowledge. They didn't just know it to use it and dance in church on Sunday. And when trouble comes, they start screaming, Oh God, where are you? God, where are you? Do you know your God? That he is always there or not? They made the king furious for a bit. But they saved that king's soul at the end. Because they knew what the king did not know. Are you able to stick it through so that the heathen will see your faith and come to the knowledge of your God? They were bound, thrown into the fire. But the fire came and made this fire look like a joke. 
that's the God we serve. The consuming fire came and consumed fire. Uh huh. And the king was astonished. And because these three boys demonstrated their knowledge of God to this king, listen to verse 28. Because they came out of the fire, you know, everybody was like, what, 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 what? They did not smell of, of fire, they did not, their body wasn't hurt, nothing, their clothes were still intact. Not even the smell of fire was on them. And verse 28, listen to what Nebuchadnezzar said. When you stick it through, you are saving souls that would rather have gone to hell. Listen to what the heathen king said. Because of what he saw, he learned from these boys who believed in their God. Verse 28. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him and they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god small g except their own god capital g therefore i make a decree that any people nation or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made as ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Verse 30. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Let's go back to verse before we, 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 we end. Look at verse 28. Nebuchadnezzar blessed God because a few people decided not to be everyone. They knew their God and they lived by what they knew. Okay? Nebuchadnezzar blessed the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he agreed that they frustrated his word. He agreed. But, they frustrated his word, but, listen to this, they, 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 they yielded their bodies. First of all, he delivered his servants who trusted. Let's go back what a bit. So, he said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. So first you have to trust. And they have frustrated the king's word so you defy like David defied Goliath. You know the truth. So don't just do what the rest are doing. Live by what you know. They frustrated the king's word and they yielded. They yielded their bodies. So you trust God and you yield to his spirit. If you don't yield, that will be you just fighting on your own. God did not send you to fight on your own. Don't say, how am I going to do it? Just say, Holy Spirit, help me here. They trusted in God and they yielded their bodies. 
and they refused to serve or worship any other rubbish except their own God. So Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged this God, the God of the Jew, Jewish people, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged and he made a decree. Remember, he was the ruling power. So this decree went to all the nations. He said, any people, nation or language which, which speaks anything amiss. If you say one more rubbish word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, you will be cut into pieces. <laughs> you see how God works? Trust in him and yield your body to him. If Nebuchadnezzar said, if anyone dares to say one more rubbish word about the God of Israel, they will be cut in pieces. Not just they, their whole house shall be turned into a hash heap. Hash, hash heap. Rubbish, rubble. Because there is no other God. Who can deliver like this? And listen to the last. The people, you know, the, 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 those envious uh, counselors were rubbing their hands. Now, let's see. Uh-huh. See now? What happened to me, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They were promoted. <laughs> you thought I was high before and you start to pull me down. Watch. What is happening next? I'm climbing higher. My friends, embrace your tribulation. It's only your promotion. It only leads to your promotion. When you stand with God, when you yield to this God, when you trust this God, He cannot, you cannot serve this God for, for nothing. He never called you to serve Him in vain. The king promoted the people he wanted to kill because people came to backbite. The spirit of envy was there. Conspiracy. And today I declare over you, may your tribulation turn into your promotion in the mighty name of Jesus. Once you stand with Jesus, he can never let you down. The end was good. Your end will be good in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 How time flies when we have fun. Can we just say a few words of prayers over ourselves? You can't hear a word like this without claiming it. You must claim it. Say, Lord, reveal to me this power. Revelation power to know you. That's what I'm asking for. The ability to trust you and to yield to you, Lord, give that to me, I pray. And once I trust you and yield to you, send me divine eleve elevation and promotion. May I be elevated beyond my peers, beyond those who hate me. May I continue to grow. May I continue to be promoted. In the mighty name of Jesus. Christianity is unknowing. We want to know this God that we serve. Shall we take those prayer points? Declare to yourselves that your tribulation will turn to your promotion. In the mighty name of Jesus. And because you trust and yield to this God. He will continue to reveal this power to you so that you will know him more and know him better. And by you yielding to him and trusting him, he will continue to elevate you and promote you because he put you there 
to rule and reign with him. We are going back to Genesis 1. Subdue the earth. You have dominion over the birds of the air, over the fish of the sea, over the cattle on the land, large animals, small animals. You rule and reign. Occupy until I come. This is your uh, 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 mission. That This is your assignment here on earth. Shall we pray? In Jesus' name, Marco Santa, Sandara Mashe, Yes, Kalama Santo, Arriga Roda Zakata, Catliaribo, Catliaribo, Marco Sarata, Chelela Kai, Chelela Kai, Chelela Kai. Father, give us the, the revelation of, of the power that is in you for us, that you have bestowed on us. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened that we may know you, O oh Lord. Help us to trust in you. Help us to trust in you. Help us to trust in you. Let no fire stop us. Let no tribulation stop us. Let nothing, no spirit of envy or conspiracy stop us. Father, let us be rooted in Christ. He is the head, we are the body. We receive our nourishment from God. Jesus sent his angel into that fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We can never walk alone. We can never walk alone. We must know the, the greatness and the extent of, of the power and the calling and the hope that we have in God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Marco Sarata, es kalama santo, santa ramashe, Marco Sarata, e yakada, sakata ziba, barigaro da, barro deke, espera de de asa. Father, we thank you because our tribulation will turn to our promotion. Give us the strength to stand in the face of opposition. Give us the, the spiritual energy to stand and to declare to the enemy, you might send your minions, but they cannot find me. You have, you have sent those household uh, 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 witches and, and, and eavesdropping demons, but they cannot find me. They cannot contact me. I, I, will, I refuse to, be, to, to have any contact with, with the wrong spirit. I am not, I, I refuse for the enemy to use me as a point of contact. I will not be contacted in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. I refuse to be contacted. You, you cannot know my number. You cannot touch me. You cannot feel me. You cannot come near me. Because I have, I have yielded to the spirit of almighty God. Father, I thank you. Lord, I bless your name. Lord, I worship you because this word is powerful and we claim it for ourselves. It's not about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's about us and you. Individual walk with you. We want to know you, Lord. We want to be called your own. We want people to write about us as well. We want to be that, that sign to the Gentile, to the unbeliever. That when they see us, they will say, there is no God like the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen, amen. Father, use us, O oh Lord. You paid the price for our sin. You bought us over. We are sold out to you, Lord. On us, Lord, and use us. On us, and use us for your glory. And we shall receive the benefits. Because at the end of the day, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were promoted. Father, may we be promoted constantly as we live in obedience Amen. to you. As we walk in obedience, as we walk in trust, as we live in your presence. Because in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Father, we bless your name. We worship you. We honor you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, saints. Get your communion elements. Let's go quickly and take communion. The Father doesn't stop. He keeps feeding us. His love 
is all over us. We have to pray, Holy Spirit, help me to understand this love because my mind is not strong enough. This is powerful, this is mighty, this is wonderful. Help us to get it, Holy Spirit. Help us to get it and help us to spread it. Not just get it for ourselves, but be able to go and disciple and tell others. This is what God has done. He did it for them. He's doing it for me. He can do it for you. Let their eyes also be open, like Nebuchadnezzar's eyes were open to the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The same way, the same way at the Last Supper. Things that no human being ever thought possible before. They thought it was a human being sitting in front of them or sitting in their midst. They thought that their leader was one like them. They didn't know that they had such a privilege. Others were saying, oh, the the, the disciples of John the Baptist fast. The disciples of the Pharisees, they fast. But your disciples don't fast. Jesus said, calm down. I'm here now. Do you know the privilege that we have in Christ Jesus? When others are beating themselves and cutting themselves, you're, you're, you're smiling. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego going to the fire and fire is burning others. Come on, guys. This is, this is out of this world. Jesus took bread. All he did was to say, thank you, Father. I bless you, Father, because you are wonderful. I bless you, Father, because you are like no other. I bless you, Father, because you are awesome in all your ways. That's all Jesus did. And the power of the Holy Spirit hit that bread. And he said, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, imagine you were there. Imagine you were there. You wondered what is he talking about? This is my body? Yes. That's who, that's the God we worship. He gives you everything. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And he says, do this in memory of me. That's what we are doing now. We are saying, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you yielded your body to be broken so that ours may be made whole. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks. He said, Father, thank you. Thank you that you are a wonderful God. Thank you that you don't do things the way human beings think. Thank you that I can rely on you. Thank you that this journey that I'm about to embark on has already been settled in heaven. Give me the strength to carry on. I choose to do it. I choose to yield. I choose to trust you. Thank you for being with me all the way. And he turned to his disciples and said, this is the cup of my blood. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant. This one seals and cancels every other. Cup of the new and everlasting covenant. After this, nothing else stands. So this is my blood, which will be shed for you, my disciples. And for all men, so that sins may be forgiven. My blood will wash the sins of the world away. And he said, do this in memory of me. Continue to do this until I come back. 
and think of me while you do it. Yes, Lord Jesus, we think of you. Who could have done such a thing? What love that a friend should lay down his life for another friend. You knew us. You loved us. You trusted us. And you went to the cross on our behalf. You allowed Satan to deal mercilessly with you because you loved and trusted us. You say, these are my people. They can never fail. I'll put my life on the line for them. And they'll just have to, to walk the walk with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your body. We thank you for your blood. Father, we thank you for sending your word to become flesh and to dwell among flesh and to die for flesh. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, for your power that rests upon these gifts so that they now become the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior and King Jesus, the consuming fire, the fire that comes into us and every other rubbish fire becomes a joke. We take you, Lord. We take you, Lord. We take you in. And we say, rule over us. Burn in us. Burn around us. That those demons that come to, stay, to, to scare us, may they be scared by your fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Do marvelous things in our lives so that unbelievers will see your power in our lives and they will come to the knowledge of you. We pray for them and we thank you for our lives that you brought us in. You didn't allow us to perish in our sin. But help us that the, our death, that you died for us, that we should be able to live your life that you gave to us. May we continue to be overcomers. May we continue to have victory power. May we continue to rule and reign and occupy the earth until you come again. Thank you, God the Father. Thank you, God the Son. Thank you, God, the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The body of Christ. precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. the Lord of my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. He has done great things, more than we can ever ask, think, or imagine. Father, we bless you. Thank you that you did not wait for us to be perfect before you died for us, because it would never have happened. Thank you that you trusted us and you gave us the power to succeed in your word, by your love. Thank you that you didn't leave us alone. You put down your will for us, your eternal word. 
We know your will. Help us, sweet Holy Spirit, to walk according to the will of God, according to the word of God, according to the examples that Jesus came into this world. The word of God came personally to share himself with us. Father, we bless your name by receiving your body and your blood. May we continue to grow into your image. May we continue to be transformed from being mere men into being God beings. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Transform our minds. We declare that we have the mind of Christ. Transform us, O Lord. Teach us, sweet Holy Spirit, and help us in our time of weaknesses. And use us to show the unbeliever that we have a living God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Israel. The God of the whole earth. We bless your name. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, sense, you've done it again. Well done, well done, well done. The time flies. I know we were a few minutes late, but we are we've managed to, to not be late at the end. Too. Okay, I love you. But remember, you are children of the kingdom. Don't don't let anything or anyone tell you otherwise. You belong to Jesus. He died for you. There's nothing he cannot do for you. You just have to know it and learn to live by it. By trusting him, by living in obedience, and by yielding. Yield to his will. What may seem impossible to your physical eyes is not impossible to God. He's got your back. He's got you. He bought you. He owns you. He wants only the best for you. He created this world for you. The earth. <laughs> People, this world belongs to us, children of God. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Just step in, step in, and, step in and claim. Step in and claim. Step in and claim. You know? With understanding and with love. Okay? Right, so during the week, we are still having our Bible study for now until middle of December. We'll take a short break from the 15th of December and, and start again on the 5th of January. Bible study I'm talking about. Bible study that we have on, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Friday. Okay? We'll have a break on those ones, but we'll continue um, the Thursday night 9 p.m. prayer and the Friday night 10 p.m. prayer. As the Lord would have it, this Christmas Eve is a Thursday. So instead of that 9 p.m. prayer on that Thursday 24th, we will have our Christmas Eve service right here online. Christmas Eve, right here, 10.30 p.m. on the 24th of December. Thursday, 24th of December, we'll have a service like now, yeah? And on the 25th, we, won't, we will not have service. Because when you stay till midnight on, on 24th, you want to sleep, you want to cook, you want to eat. God wants you to enjoy life, so do it. But give him the glory. Okay? And, um, yeah, of course, that Friday, being 25th, no, no prayer as well, because everybody will be so full. Oh, the Lord has given me so much food. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Enjoy, children of the kingdom. So... That's, that's about the announcement for now. Remember, you are children of the kingdom. 
God has blessed you with whatever, talent, money, time, use it to serve God. Whatever God has blessed you with, use it to serve God. You will get the reward. You will be promoted. It's not victorious word. Read it for yourself. Okay? And I think that's all for now. So we'll continue to pray for those who decide to partner with Jesus and invest in his kingdom. Yeah, that is God's will. He says, occupy till I come. We own this earth. He wants us to do business with him because he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Okay? All right. So I love you and leave you. And I lift you up before the Lord and I bless you. And I declare over you that the blood of Jesus is your refuge, that the light of the Holy Spirit is your shield, and the love of the Father is a fire wall of protection around you. Imagine that fire. No other fire can penetrate that fire. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You have the all-consuming fire. You have the real fire in you. Your fire will consume the other. It will make the other fire look like a joke. May you remain in this divine fire. In Jesus' name. Excuse me. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. Jesus loves you more. He died for you. Mwah. See you soon. God bless. Bye for now. Bye.